We fought a moldy potato, a twonky, an angry FM radio, and now it's time to take down disgraced Super Bowl dancer, Left Shark. This is gonna be a weird one. Ratchet Deadlocked is an action platformer with a heavy focus on action and a few platforms from time to time. It's filled to the brim with plenty of shooting, lots of explosions, even more shooting, a massive spider tank, and maybe a few jumps here and there. Oh, and a lot more shooting. Take a journey with me and the Lombax and we'll find out just how enjoyable this nearly two-decade-old game is in 2023. Given Deadlock's heavy action focus and decided lack of story content, I'm going to handle this one a bit different than prior titles. Instead of going through the story and gameplay at the same time, this is going to be broken into three sections. The first will be a general plot synopsis, then I'll go over gameplay, and we'll wrap this all up with some final thoughts on the whole experience so I can pretend my opinion matters. This will hopefully allow me to go into a bit more detail on each aspect while still retaining some semblance of order throughout the video. All that said and done, let's get going. Money, 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 money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, that's not the whole thing. So what is the story of this game? Well, we pick up in the spooky shadow sector where a man, robot, something in between takes out some robots and celebrates moments before being taken out himself by an even goofier looking man. This hairdo of a guy announces the ending of this season of Dreadzone, and we jump very specifically to 11 hours ago on the Starship Phoenix. Galaxy saving heroes Ratchet, Clank, and Al for some reason are taken captive by a single grunt mere moments after being told heroes all over are being abducted. Ratchet turns into Robocop and we're into the tutorial. After a bit of shooting around to qualify, something I feel like should have already been taken care of given our history, we are made aware that the gang and Al are being held captive by Gleeman Vox. They're forced to take part in a gladiator tournament, which is illegal for some reason despite the many voluntary gladiator tournaments we've taken part in so far. I guess they draw the line at shitty news anchors narrating the whole thing. The general idea here is that Vox likes money, and unless we take part in Dread Zone, these handy bomb callers will either electrocute or head explode us. Ratchet doesn't seem that upset about it, and honestly, he's been through work so I don't blame him. Clank and Al are here too, both operating as our guys in the chair for the whole ordeal while simultaneously working on a way to get us all out of this. Regardless, we'll have to play along for now, and since Clank needs to do some logistics work, nuts and bolts here are coming along instead. So we play the game, suffering the endless banter of our sportscasters, buying time, and making a lot of money along the way. After a bit of senseless violence, we learn that Ace Hardlight, a man with all the personality of a moldy block of cheese, is shockingly not well liked by the children fans of this illegal and horrifically violent gladiator event. He's losing Vox a lot of money, the worst crime known to man, and Vox isn't too happy about it. What are they gonna do about that? Well, nothing really. Hardlight never changes, and the kids keep hating him. Moving on. Ratchet fights his way through a lot of robot zombies, which makes little sense, but don't question it. Some nerds get smacked around in a commercial for trading cards, and we learn about this guy's shell shock moments before taking him on a few times. I call this one my dishonorable Discharge. Hey, maybe call that literally anything else. Also, the slander plotline comes into play here. The Dreadzone casters make some comically inept attempts to paint the events of the last three games as Ratchet and Clank being the villains, which is easily disproven, but hey, when does anyone ever fact check anything, right? As a matter of fact, there's a running theme here that no one involved with Dreadzone, other than Vox, are aware of just who Ratchet and Clank are. Either that, or they are willfully trying to convince the audience that things they saw happen in real time not that long ago didn't actually happen at all. To jog your memory, so far, Ratchet and Clank have saved this galaxy twice, once from a man who technically did succeed, but we beat him up real good so it goes in the win column, and once from a robot who also technically succeeded for a bit, but we also beat him up real good and undid all his hard work, so that also goes in the win column. They've also saved an entirely different galaxy from the worst invasive species to ever exist. That time, I think we managed to prevent most people from dying, so it's a de facto win either way. Even with all that in our resume, Vox still thinks he can convince the masses that Ace Hardlight is what? cooler? And that we are actually some horrible villains? I thought the whole point of this show was supposed to be heroes versus exterminators. Doesn't it make more sense to let people think we're big heroes so that more people tune in to see these icons fighting for their lives? Now that sounds like good television. Instead, we get this absurd plotline that doesn't matter, never should have existed, and eventually culminates in nothing because Hardlight always sucks and everyone still loves Ratchet anyway. I'm probably thinking too hard about this, but come on, they give me so little to work with here, I have to choose 
choose something to pick apart. Anyway, Shellshock gets defeated, and six million dollars are lost to Vox. We move on after learning that Ace used to be a hero himself. I wonder if that'll ever matter. More shooting, more explosions, a bit of slander, and some jumping later, and the background characters have made some inroads into getting the callers off. I am skipping over a lot here, and honestly it's because most of it just honestly doesn't matter. For as minimal as this story is, even what we do get is mostly pointless. Summing up the rest until something important happens, Vox wants money, the kids hate Ace, and Ratchet tears the game apart one planet at a time. So Clank and Al have figured out a way to get the callers off. Take a guess as to what will happen next. Will we A, get the callers off and escape, B, get the callers off and attack Vox directly, or C, our method to get the callers off will fail? If you answered any of the above, you have too much faith. The answer is actually way down at Z. I'll get shot, which we are supposed to care about, and none of anything that just happened mattered even a little bit. This does, however, finally get Ratchet angry, so now we can focus on actually ending things by continuing normally through the Dread Zone competition. Eventually, we take down Ace, which again, I feel like we are supposed to care about, but there's really no reason to. Vox offers to make us the new Ace Hardlight, which of course Ratchet declines. As revenge for this, Vox decides to put us through yet another challenge instead of pressing the Make His Head Explode button, because this gauntlet is supposed to be really hard. We, of course, beat the mathematically impossible gauntlet, and this makes Vox so irrationally angry that the only possible solution is to blow up the entire battle dome along with everyone in it. Stopping the explosion would require us to destroy three reactors in the next half hour. A truly impossible task, so it's looking pretty rough for the gang and thousands of innocent bystanders. <laughs> Right, I forgot this is a video game. Vox challenges us in a big flying ship like a true hero. Once that's been properly dismantled in a safe and controlled manner, we leave Vox to die in a fiery explosion of his own making. All the remaining heroes live, we escape, and Dr. Nefarious is still floating on an asteroid through space. A happy ending for all, roll credits. Oh, also, I suppose Al is still alive. Now that the story is actually out of the way, let's talk about the gameplay. Deadlocked probably controls the snappiest of the series so far. Movement feels smooth as butter, and strafing is now always active rather than being tied to a button push. This makes combat a breeze, and the auto-targeting is usually pretty on point with putting shots where I wanted them to go. The only complaints I have are due to Clank not being with us this go-around. The little toaster was the source of our hover, high jump, and long jump. With him gone, we lose those abilities entirely, which feels a little sad, but it doesn't hinder the overall gameplay given the hilariously light focus on platforming. Weapon and health levels are a staple at this point and have made a return. Health is simple. Fill the bar and health goes up. Every now and again we get a big flash, but mostly it just goes up. Enemies can hit pretty hard, but never enough to outpace the rate of health increase. Most hard-hitting enemies could take me down in 3-4 to four hits, and the rest were usually around half a dozen. In most other titles, this might seem unfair, but it seems bad balance given the overwhelming firepower we unleash. And hey, I can't miss armor upgrades this time since they're tied to progression, so I'll count that as a win for me. Speaking of firepower, weapon levels are unfortunately pretty disappointing. Aside from some stat increases, nothing really fun happens to the guns until you hit level 10. Disappointing, but I got over it quickly enough. Ignore that, I'll get to it in a bit. Overall, the weapons are fun to use, I just wish there were more of them. Where prior titles had dozens of guns that may or may not have been useful but were at least fun to play with, with, Deadlocked has 10 guns in total. Each weapon has a use, can be used even outside of how you'd expect to great effect, and I can't say I didn't have fun with all of them. Nothing hits quite as hard as somehow exploding a flying ship by slamming a big spiked ball into the ground. Alright, fine, I'll talk about it. Gun mods are a new addition, and a huge part of this game. Leveling up a gun unlocks a new alpha mod slot and an associated alpha mod. These range from increased fire rate to more ammo to better knockback and so on. Once a mod is unlocked, or purchased in New Game Plus, it can be removed from one gun and slotted into any other. The implications of this are honestly insane. Want a machine gun that fires at the speed of light but has practically no ammo? Go for it. Want a rocket launcher that hits every enemy from here to Kalamazoo, Michigan but feels like a light tickle from a small woodland mouse? Go for it. The customization here is truly incredible, but also entirely unnecessary. I didn't even begin to touch mods in my entire playthrough because I just honestly never had a need to. 
console. Now, maybe I'm just a god-tier gamer, maybe not, the jury is still out on that one, but such a heavily developed part of the game should probably be more necessary than it is here, at least in my opinion. In addition to alpha mods, we also have omega mods. Omega mods are purchased once and can be slotted into any number of weapons in addition to alpha mods. Omega mods add a secondary effect to the weapon itself. For example, having lightning arc from your target to everyone within a 10 mile radius with each shot, which is crazy and makes it the only valid Omega mod in my mind. I'll put on screen the different Omega mods and what they can do. Certain types can only go on certain guns, and most are largely irrelevant, but they do make for some fun variety. Giving the grenade launcher a puddle of hot magma is cool looking, for example, but not necessarily useful. Putting the morph mod on my auto turrets was pretty fun though. Omega mods are fun, occasionally completely broken, and in offensive. They're a nice band-aid to cover the gaping wound left by the lack of true weapon variety. Have I rambled on about all that for long enough yet? Yes? Alright, good, so I can move on to rambling on about other things. The flow of Deadlocked is wildly different than other Ratchet games and is my favorite aspect. Rather than going to a planet and exploring around to solve whatever problems ail the locals, we are sent in to beat a ruthless obstacle course where 99 out of 100 obstacles fight back and make it to the end by any means necessary. All the while, this guy yaps in our ear. I think explosions are pretty! Remember how I said I loved the Galactic Ranger missions in Up Your Arsenal? This is that again, only it's the whole game. Each mission is mostly unique, requiring you to complete a specific task. Sometimes that requires piloting a giant spider tank. Sometimes you need to navigate a precarious grind rail course. Sometimes it's a time trial on the speeder bike from Jack and Daxter, which I still suck at. I love this. It's clear, it's concise, it's action-packed. It's everything I love about the gameplay of this series neatly packed into a few dozen bite-sized missions with little to know in between. Enough gushing, moving on. Bosses in Deadlocked are relatively forgettable. There are five in total if you only count those with a health bar, and they all operate pretty much the same. Hit them a lot, and don't get hit back. Now that may seem like an oversimplification, but you can't really oversimplify this. The actual boss designs are great, no complaints there, but fighting them felt like a bathroom break moment in a movie you've already seen instead of a climactic fight. Enough of that, there's one last thing I need to talk about before giving my final thoughts. <laughs> As mentioned previously, Clank isn't our partner this go-around. Instead, we get these two guys following us around at all times. I like these guys, but they can't compete with Clank. I mean, sure, they have guns and actively fight with us. Sure, they can be commanded to turn cranks and hack things while we fight. And sure, they follow our every command without hesitation and will lay down their lives for us at a moment's notice. But come on, who could ever beat this little guy? Truth be told, if these bots were in any other entry of this franchise, it would be way too much and would absolutely break everything. As it stands, they fit in perfectly here and made the journey that much less lonely. They're upgradable, customizable, and even fill the few seconds of silence we get from time to time with snappy dialogue. I enjoyed these goofy little guys, and something tells me that I'll never see them again, so I'll enjoy it while it lasts. I never did get the big ultimate move to work right, though. So Ratchet Deadlocked, is it still a fun game? Hell yeah it is, if you love mowing down everything in your path over and over again, massive explosions, and battling the overwhelming power of corporate greed, then this is a great title for you. I tore into the story a lot, and that's because it was fun to do. This isn't LA Noir or Mass Effect, there are no branching paths or hard decisions, the villains aren't people you can sympathize with and eventually wonder if you did the right thing by stopping them. Vox and Hardlight are bad guys because they just are, and that's okay here. Sometimes it's fine for a story to be a little thin. This plot is dumb, goes nowhere, and ultimately doesn't matter because it just doesn't need to. The story is lacking in a lot of ways, sure, but to be frank, the story isn't what this game is about. Hating a game like this because the story fell short is like demanding a refund because the crust on your pizza was a little bland. Sure, some plot lines didn't matter, and the villain made some really dumb choices, but the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is what sells this game, and it does a damn good job of it. The combat, the vehicles, the encounters, from level to level all the way to the end, there wasn't a single mission that I didn't find at least some enjoyment in. Every time the gameplay started feeling a bit bland, they threw in something new to shake things up a little, like taking away all your guns or forcing you to fight off waves of enemies while keeping the walls from quickly closing in on you. I even decided to play around in New Game Plus a bit this time around because I just wasn't ready to let this title go yet, and even that was a blast. I didn't care enough to get a gun to level 1 
100, but I did at least try it and I did enjoy myself. And hey, I even got this game's version of the Rhino. It was a good time and definitely a satisfying gun to use. I hope everyone disappointed that I didn't use the Rhino in any of the other games is adequately annoyed that I still have not and instead used what I think is the only time it's called something else. To make a long rant short, I loved this game. It might even be up there in my top 20 games I've ever played. It doesn't quite make the top 10 list, but I still think that's pretty damn good for a title released in 2005. This is absolutely a great game to play in 2023. And so that does it for Ratchet & Clank. Obviously, the series isn't over yet, but I have to shove the Lombax at least for a time. Up next, we're taking a look at Sly Cooper 2, and on deck is something I'll hold off on announcing because suspense is more fun. Let me know what you guys think of this different format. I did it mostly out of necessity this time, but if you guys like it more than how I did everything else, then I guess it can stay. As always, let me know how you felt down in the comments below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe if you're feeling extra spicy today. I'll see everyone next time.